Mați ați dat, dar eu pic ce se Okay, so you and our audience, I will uh, talk in English. Uh, so this is a joint project with Bola uh, Jumrakozi, and it was part of uh, our previous uh, Horizon project. Uh, to put it very simply, uh, today I will talk about uh, multinational suppliers and information and communication technology use. Um, so we know from the literature as well, but also uh, from, from the press and uh, from business news that it's good to, to supply multinationals because of many things, many aspects. Uh, it's a good opportunity to, to get integrated uh, into global value chains. It's a good opportunity to uh, to get uh, uh, to, to progress um, in terms of technology use, in terms of uh, quality and reliability. Um, and it's a, it's a very good signal for, uh, for potential new buyers as well. Um, so we can, we can have a first claim, sir, that uh, it's good to, uh, to be part of uh, global value chains to, to supply multinational value. I will use the two terms um, in an exchangeable way. Uh, I, will, I will be more specific later on. Uh, maybe when, when we talk about global value chain or global supply chain participation, it's, uh, it's a very good start to think about a firm supplying a multinational buyer. Um, second, we also know that it's difficult to join global value chains. Uh, whoever, uh, I mean, if, if someone uh, ever looked at uh, the topic of, of multinationals and multinational suppliers, uh, it's um, and 
a very uh, frequent uh, claim that especially in uh, in um, less developed regions, uh, but also in, in Central Eastern Europe, uh, not very nice that we have all these foreign direct investments, we have multinational firms in the country. At the same time, uh, local firms still struggle uh, to get access to these uh, buyers because of uh, many requirements uh, which are not so easy to fulfill. So it's our second claim is due to difficult to join global value chains, it's difficult to, to supply multinationals, however, it has a lot of benefits. Uh, we know from the literature about uh, some, some problems uh, like uh, financial liquidity issues uh, with the suppliers, quality issues, um, lacking suppliers lacking specific certificates, uh, not being reliable enough, not having enough capacity, and so on. Uh, and um, but there can be others. So it's it's still sort of an open question what can help firms to supply multinationals and become part of global value chains. Um, so in all this literature, uh, which I um, sort of uh, putting it simply, uh, I, in, in which I focus on, on these two things, that it's good to, to supply multinationals, but it's difficult to supply multinationals. Um, we, we know many things based on um, data, which is sort of um, aggregate, not aggregated in a sense, but not, not precise enough to, to uh, be able to um, look at, uh, let's say, uh, um, specific buyer supply relations or specific technology. So, so in most of this literature, uh, we talk about firms benefit, suppliers benefiting from MMEs based on productivity. So based on with some general notion, but we, we don't really have data about specific technologies. We don't really see how exactly uh, a supplier firm can uh, learn from a buyer firm. So this is one thing, one direction in which we will go in this paper. Uh, and the second direction is that um, in this paper, we, we will use data uh, in which we have actual information uh, on buyer supply links. Many times the literature does not have it. I mean, there, there are some countries in which we, we already have this kind of transaction level or firm to firm level transaction based uh, data set, but it's still rare. And most of the time, um, so, so most of the papers just uh, focused on uh, input output matrices and uh, established by industries and supplier industries and uh, looked at uh, the share of multinationals in the bio industries. So uh, did not focusing on uh, actual links between, between buyers and suppliers, but sort of potential ones. So this is the, the second uh, aspect uh, in which we, uh, we claim that we progress in this paper, uh, that we look at uh, actual supplier links combined uh, with uh, looking at uh, a specific technology or specific technology. What kind of technology we look at? Mm. So, uh, okay. uh, as, as a third element uh, in this um, motivational slide, uh, we also claim that digitalization is important. Uh, you can hear about, you hear a lot about uh, that and the role, the importance of uh, information and communication technologies, artificial intelligence, um, and also the, the importance of intangible inputs in general uh, in, in firm performance. Uh, and, and in this, uh, we, so th there are papers looking at specific aspects of, of digital technologies, um, showing that access to broadband internet, use of big data, use of artificial intelligence, uh, are beneficial for firms in terms of their performance. Here, uh, because we focus on buyer supply organizations specifically and this channel of um, improving firm performance at the end, uh, we look at specific uh, information and communication technology, which uh, enable automated information sharing between buyers and suppliers. So, so this will be the specific technology we, we will use. And we will focus on supply by links within the country because uh, we have data on that only. Unfortunately, we cannot cross the borders, uh, but we will uh, look at uh, the, the international connection of buyers. So in this way, uh, we ask 
whether the supply of firm is connected to, to a global supply chain or not. So uh, these are our two questions. Uh, first, we, we have these two elements, uh, the use of automated information sharing uh, <coughs> uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, GDC integration. Uh, and, and we look at the interplay between these two, uh, first asking uh, to what extent the use of these technologies have firms uh, to supply multinationals or to, to be part of the global value chain. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, we also ask uh, to what extent uh, having multinational buyers have firms uh, to introduce these specific technologies. Because of course, the, the direction can, can go in, in two ways. So we would like to show evidence uh, for both or to, to look at both perspectives. Um, so what do I uh, talk about uh, when, when I mention uh, this automated information sharing technology? So we take these uh, from, from standard uh, survey, uh, which is uh, done in all uh, European Union countries. Um, this is a Eurostat survey um, carried out in the individual countries, uh, which focuses on, on the use of information and communication technologies. Uh, and in this, uh, there are two specific questions uh, which we can connect to this uh, automated information sharing across firms. Uh, one is the use of uh, electronic data interchange. So this is this is a technology, uh, basically, which which can be used for this purpose, but it can be used for uh, for, for communication with um, public authorities as well, uh, not on, not only uh, with with suppliers or buyers. Uh, and and the second question uh, concerns the the actual activity. So it doesn't ask about uh, the specific technology. It can be done using this electronic data interchange or uh, through other means. But the question is whether the firm shares uh, information uh, electronically uh, on supply chain uh, management. And, and if um, with, with buyers and suppliers, and basically it, uh, it clarifies that it cannot be some kind of um, emailing back and forth between firms. So it, it should be something uh, automated. So we use these two measures, uh, and in, in most of uh, the, the paper, we combine the two, and we, we say that a firm has external automated information sharing technology if it either uh, uses the ADI technology uh, or it, uh, it shares uh, information in an automated way along the supply chain according to, uh, to the second question. Yes. Is there any uh technology which are not the uh, ID? Yes. I, I cannot tell you an example, but uh it, it, there are some examples. Ed can be one, uh and, and that can there can be other other things as well. Uh if I'm correct, it can also be done during the web page. So there there are these kind of adding messages coming back and forth between firms. I have very uh, good at uh, the, the details. I mean, I mean, I don't really know about the details, uh, but this automated information sharing can also happen through, through the website or the half of the website, but, but definitely not by uh, individual emails or something like that. Basically, uh, our main claim is that those firms who use either of these technologies, uh, they, they make information more easily processable uh, for their business partners. And that's what we think might be more valued by those firms uh, who are connected to global value chains because they, they use um, more advanced technologies in general. So they, they can uh, make use of this um, more precise and, and uh, more timely information sharing better. And also these firms uh, tend to have uh, more complicated uh, supply chains in which, again, uh, having information processing a better way can be more and more value. Do we know anything about the, who is the owner of this so software? No. 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 no, no, no. So because that SAP uh, can be bought and can be managed from the outside by, uh, say, a data handling firm or whatever. 
No, so which might be different yeah. case if it is a sure. channel or somehow managed by the by the by the bank national. Yes, exactly. So actually, this in in this survey they ask about technology use, uh, and and we don't know anything beyond that, uh, and and we use it as as a reference to what the firm does and where it comes from and and how. How do you how exactly they use this technology? We don't know, unfortunately. Um, and uh, you are you are losing the, the ICT survey, yes. so then the firms might uh, give information whether they contribute to the development of the technology what they are using. Oh, uh, you mean the innovation survey? Uh, no, 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 the, the ICT survey. ICT survey. Um, there, I I don't know. About that, actually, not nothing. Those two ways in which we use. So it, th there was just uh, a question on whether they use it or not. Oh. And actually, back to to your uh, question about S SAP. So the, these are the external automated information sharing technologies we focus on. Uh, but we also use information for other technologies, which can be related in, in a way. Uh, one important group uh, is the internal automated information sharing, uh, which is asked as a separate block uh, in this ICT survey. And these are technologies like this enterprise resource planning and customer relationship management, uh, which enable automated information sharing within a firm. So it's not really communication between two firms, but it can be still beneficial because it, it can process um, high quality information. It can uh, improve the operation of the firm itself. Uh, so it, it it might be also appreci appreciated by uh, national buyers. Uh, it's an open question. We don't know, but it's not directly related to firm to firm communication. Um, and we also have information uh, on other aspects like uh, whether the firm uses a web page, uh, whether it uses cloud computing, how many computers there are in a firm. Uh, compared to, to the number of employees, for example, et cetera. Um, so these are the ICT, ICTs uh, I, will, I will mention in, in, uh, new, in, this, in this project in, in the following uh, couple of 45 minutes or so. Um, but the focus is on, on the external ones, uh, allowing for, for easier communication between firms and information sharing. So uh, what do we do in this project? First of all, um, we, we build a very simple theoretical theme framework uh, in which uh, we, we assume that there might be a complementarity uh, between uh, the information and communi communication technology use of a supplier firm and uh, the technology uh, of the buyer. In this, we will differentiate between multinational technology and simple technology. So we will have a very, very uh, simple uh, buyer type heterogeneity. Um, and of course, uh, we will also, uh, I will be more specific on that uh, later on, but, but this is the focus that uh, there, there might be uh, some kind of complementarity between, between these two things. Uh, then uh, we will use firm level data uh, on, on ICTUs. Uh, and firm to firm level data uh, on within country uh, transactions between firms uh, to establish uh, which firms uh, have multinational buyers and when do they supply these buyers. So we, we have panel data sets. We, we, can, we can see some kind of an entry uh, to supplying multinationals, and also we can see. Uh, entry to, to using uh, specific ICT technologies, and uh, we will we will use this uh, for for our identification strategy later on. Um, and connected to to our previous two questions, uh, so first we look at technology complementarity, and we see that some evidence for that uh, based on our estimates uh, about. So the increase in the probability of supplying a multinational uh, is about one third of, of the baseline probability uh, in case of those firms who use this external automated information sharing. On the other side of the coin, there is also some kind of an evidence for, for technology propagation. Uh, so we see that 
uh, those firms uh, who have multinational buyers, they are more likely to introduce, but, but they have no uh, automated information te technology, automated information sharing technology use in the payment period, a higher share uh, introduces these technologies uh, in, in the next period. And not only actual multinational buyers matter, but also the, the potential ones. Uh, and, and the rationale behind that is that uh, if a firm, so combined, combined with the first uh, observation, so if the firm is more likely uh, to supply new m and then there can be some kind of a strategy that um, with, with more potential m and buyers, uh, I'm uh, more incentive, so I have a higher incentive to, to introduce this technology because it can be uh, more beneficial for me. I mean, it, it, it might make me more likely to supply uh, m and uh, in, in the next round. So, so the difference mm -hmm. is the second uh, can dynamic. Yeah. Uh, first, we'll so yeah. First, it's based on the cross section, but we will we will also look at new buyers. So the acquisition of new buyers, and then there 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 will be also some kind of a dynamic thing. So having the technology, what share of my new buyers will be MMEs, or how likely am I to get new MME buyers? And the second is not getting the technology, conditional on having MME buyers. Uh, or potential and many buyers, am I more likely to introduce the technology or not? Yeah. So that's that's the difference. Okay, so first I will show you some uh, some descriptive patterns. Uh, first, you knew that using raw data, there is something going on, really. Uh, then, uh, motivated by these observations, I will very briefly describe the theoretical framework. Uh, then the data and finally the empirical patterns. So uh, about these technologies, um, it's not trivial whether they are very common or not among firms. Uh, so it's it's a fair question um, whether to whether it's it's relevant uh, in SAP to uh, to to look at um, introduction of these technologies or, or there are many firms using this or not. And I can tell you that not that many firms use this. Uh, so this is uh, not from the Hungarian data, but from the Eurostat data uh, comparison. Uh, so one column is a country. Uh, and um, here, uh, I just show you, uh, actually that's the very same survey that's about automated information sharing done on the supply chain. And the share of firms saying that, yes, they do this in a specific country, by firm size group. So uh, the bars are the smallest firms and the triangles are the are the largest ones, but still among the large firms, um, in most countries, uh, less than half of the firms uh, introduce uh, the technology or have used this technology uh, by 2015 or in, in the year of 2015. So based on this, we can say that uh, the prevalence of these technologies is not at large. Uh, and, and it's a relevant question whether firms introduce these uh, even in more developed countries uh, than Hungary. Hungary is unfortunately lagging behind here, but it's not an outlier either. So uh, we say that it's it's fair to uh, to look at this question using uh, Hungary or firm level data. Um, I could show you similar pictures for, for other technologies as well. Uh, the, the share there is a bit higher, uh, but uh, so it, but still the main, main picture is the same. Yes. Just a small question about the figure. Uh, I wonder if this signals uh, the technological advancement of the country, or is it more showing the, how should I say, how, how their local partners are integrated into the it can be both. So based on the aggregate data, we cannot really uh, reply to that. Um, actually, that's why we use firm level data to find out uh, whether whether this integration into global value chains or or M &E supplying uh, plays a role in in uh, to what extent these technologies are spread uh, or not in, in a country. So it, it can be both. Actually. Well, you will come back to mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, you analyze also, uh, that you are, um, so for instance, uh, uh, local ownership, uh, or 
versus international uh, companies uh, having different uh, you know, proportions. And, and, the, and the other question is uh, sector. So I, mm -hmm. I can imagine that automotive industry. Of course, yes. Uh, very good question. I will, I will show you something uh, in a minute uh, connected to that. At the same time, in, in the firm level regressions, we always uh, control for the industry uh, of the firm and also the whether it's foreign owned or not. So, so that's why it's, so these are you know, just general patterns uh, and, and there are many questions uh, or, or many questions can be raised why, why we see what we uh, see here. Uh, and and with from other data, uh, we can sort of um, uh, separate uh, these different um, reasons. Okay. Um, so basically, our first observation is that uh, the prevalence of these automated information sharing technologies is relatively low. Uh, then uh, let's go to uh, to the country industry level, actually. Uh, and look at uh, whether there is some kind of connection between between technology use, so the share of firms using a specific technology in a country industry bin, and uh, the share of enemy buyers uh, for that country industry bin. Uh, still aggregates, still can be many explanation behind that. But you can see that something is going on. So it's in line uh, with the suggestion that uh, in those uh, in those industry country bins in which I call it enemy by intensity, so in which uh, more uh, multinational firms buy uh, from from the firms in that industry, uh, there is some kind of a, a positive relationship between this and the share of uh, automated information sharing in supply chains. Um, as as used uh, among the firms in that uh, specific yeah. uh, country industry bin. Why do you mean the buying the products, so supply products, right? Uh, say again, sorry. Uh, buyer here means that uh, buying products yes. from the firm. Yes. Right, because you may see the transaction if the MA is buying an Hungarian subsidiary. Yeah. So true. True. <laughs> yeah. So actually here, uh, what we did is just uh, take taking a specific industry in a country and these are MNEs within the very same country and ask what's the share of MNEs in those industries which are bio industries based on uh, the input output uh, matrix within that country and then uh, uh, calculated this, this MNE bio intensity uh, number based on that. Uh, so I speed up a little bit. Uh, it's just to show you that uh, for for the other uh, ICT measure, I mean electronic data interchange and the the internal automated information sharing measures, there's some kind of a similar pattern. Still, uh, the relationship is is not always that clear. Um, if I focus on firm level data, still no controls, just using the Hungarian data uh, and separating firms uh, based on whether they introduced uh, a specific automated information sharing technology by 2017 or not, uh, and look at the share of uh, new, look at the share of MMEs uh, among the new buyers, uh, I can see, or we can see that uh, those firms have more new MLE buyers, so the, the first fail columns, uh, which introduced the technology. Again, uh, just suggestive uh, pattern. Uh, but based on this, uh, we say that, or we claim that uh, firms with automated information sharing technologies seem to be more likely to supply MLEs. Uh, we, will, we will go deeper into that. Um, second, uh, let's look at the, the technology introduction part uh, of the question uh, and ask uh, what's the relationship between uh, this uh, MNE value intensity to measure in the baseline period, so it's 2015 in this case, uh, and uh, the share of firms uh, 
introducing uh, this specific automated information sharing technology among all those firms in this industry country being uh, did not have the technology before. So the rate of introduction or something, uh, th this is what, what we can uh, call uh, the measure, uh, what we measure on, on, on the y-axis. And again, there is some kind of a positive relationship between the initial share of companies and uh, the share of new introducers. How can we do that negative? Uh, it can be negative if, uh, so it's a survey, uh, first of all, not all the firms are uh, out in, in each and every year, and it can be that, you know, random sample and everything, uh, so the um, firms so can end with an entry. But the case of the definition mm -hmm. of the growth of yeah. uh, vertical axis is currently negative. So it's calculated as the share in 2023 minus the share in 2015. And it can be that the share in 2015 is higher than the share in 2020. Yes, I understand that. Right? Okay. That. Sorry. Yeah. Two yeah. measurement issues. But um, ideally, it, it should should measure this. I mean, that, that's true that I, I don't have all the firms and there's entry and exit. Which I cannot control for unless I use firm level data. And again, uh, if uh, if I look at uh, the origin now that the similar uh, figure uh, based on Hungarian firm level data as I showed you showed you before, uh, but I look at the share of multinationals uh, in the baseline period uh, among. That those who, who introduce the technology uh, and those who do not. And uh, you can see that, um, that the initial share of, of ME uh, buyers is higher for those firms who later on introduce the technology. Uh, that's again suggested. And, and the other thing, uh, so based on the, um, besides the, the measurement issues of, of the share of uh, of new introducers among the the not yet users, uh, those aggregate patterns we see here. Uh, so if 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 these uh, truly depict that uh, there is a larger motivation for firms or, or larger share of firms introduce or tend to introduce uh, these technologies uh, in those industries industry countries uh, where there are more uh, enemies among the buyers that can come from the firm actually having more but more multinational buyers or uh, or or if, if there are the firm does not have multinational buyers but there are more potential multinational buyers in the industry so it can be beneficial for me to introduce the technology because I have multinational buyers and my buyer will be um, happier with me, uh, it will pay more, I don't know what, or, or it uh, put, puts a pressure on me to, to introduce this technology, or I introduce this in order to uh, acquire any buyers uh, in, in the future. Uh, we can disentangle these uh, two based on aggregate data, but with, with firm level data we, we can. And again, some uh, suggestive uh, figures here, uh, instead of looking at the share of MMEs among the actual buyers, uh, we looked at the share of MMEs uh, among in, in the buyer industries uh, and use uh, a cutoff uh, and uh, some decreased percentile. Uh, and we see that in those uh, cases uh, in which um, the firm has more uh, MMEs or a higher share of MMEs uh, in the buyer industries, uh, their higher share introducing uh, the technology. So not the actual, but potential. Um, suggesting that not only the actual, but also the potential of multinationals, multinational buyers can matter. So this was a very long uh, tool and introduction of descriptive patterns, uh, but I want to uh, First, we knew that uh, the, uh, the the theoretical framework uh, we uh, sketch up uh, makes sense uh, based on uh, the observed patterns in the data. So we assume that uh, there, 
for the, we would like to allow for complementarity uh, between the technologies of buyers and suppliers. Uh, we uh, have a very simple model with two types of buyers and two types of suppliers. Uh, basically, suppliers uh, differ uh, in uh, in their productivity level or in, in their appeal for uh, for multinationals. Uh, there is the good and the not so good from high type and the low type uh, to, to have it uh, very simple. And there are buyers uh, and buyers. Um, and uh, there are two types of buyers, globally connected or MMEs, uh, multinationals, uh, just to, to put it simply, and uh, local firms. Uh, and there is a share of new share of, of globally connected, uh, and we assume that uh, these multinational buyers have a different technology uh, to, to the, the non multinational ones, and there might be complementarity between this specific technology uh, and uh, the information and communication technology uh, of, of the suppliers. Um, and there are two decisions uh, to be done. Uh, within uh, or in this framework. Uh, one is uh, link formation, so what, which buyer we all choose, which supplier, uh, and the other is uh, the choice of uh, technology introduction, whether your firm uh, introduces uh, inf an information communication technology or not. So the timing uh, is First, the suppliers decide whether or not they introduce this ICT, information sharing technology, but let's hear that. Uh, and second, given uh, the type of the supplier and the ICT choice, uh, the buyers, um, so the type of the supplier and the ICT and any type of the choice, the buyers uh, decide uh, whether they will source uh, from the high or from the low tech. So it's a very basic question, but are these technologies like standardized or there are a few well-known brands? So if you introduce one technology, will that be able to communicate with all the potential buyers? Not necessarily. Uh, no, and actually also, um, so so it's complex, that's true. Um, and and we, we just simplify it uh, to, to ask whether whether they use any of this technology. As far as I know, Eddy should be uh, a general technology, which is which is like this. Uh, but uh, uh, for example, this kind this uh, uh, so so my answer is more yes for the external automated information sharing, but not really for the internal ones. So uh, there are papers on. Uh, showing that this internal technology use and the external technology use might be um, in not contradiction, but but um, so the internal type of technology use uh, might make it more difficult to to be linked to to the technology use of the other firm. Uh, but this uh, so the external automated information sharing is just. We don't know about the specific technology, but, but whether the firm uh, has something which, which enables uh, this kind of communication. And but the EDI uh, should be uh, sort of general, uh, generally applied and, and readable and used. Uh, by so it might include some technology which may be very good, but has few yeah. firms use it actually. Exactly, exactly. So so we can't be uh, that, or we, or we don't know uh, those details. Um, yeah, so uh, back to the model, and uh, then you assume network gaming. So, uh, so the, sur the joint surplus is, uh, is shared between the buyer and the supplier. Uh, we assume that it's shared, uh, it's divided equally uh, between the two. So, for those, uh, it's, uh, it's a good thing to, to get a higher joint surplus. And we start from uh, from an O-ring model of complementarity uh, used by uh, Kramer and uh, others since then, uh, in which uh, we assume that the joint surplus uh, of uh, supply buyer match uh, is uh, determined uh, by uh, the ICT use uh, of the supplier uh, and. Uh, the, the type of the buyer, which is the 
the before the, the appeal. The appeal is really uh, interesting for for the enemies. Uh, for simplification, we have it like that. Uh, and also, uh, there is complementarity uh, between uh, the industry. Uh, no, sorry, between the the type, the attitudes of the supplier uh, and and the type of the buyer. And this lambda parameter shows uh, the extent uh, of this complementarity. Uh, and in, of course, in the regressions, this, I mean, in the estimations, this will be a question whether whether this complementarity is there or not. Um, okay, and uh, the supplier choice equation uh, comes from uh, the, the maximization of, of this joint surplus. Um, and uh, as a second uh, element, we also have a technological choice equation. Uh, equation. So, given uh, that the suppliers know that no, so both suppliers know this, uh, they choose to introduce the technology, uh, which, by the way, has uh, a positive fixed cost. Uh, if um, again very vague shorthand, if the uh, the gains on the intensive and the extended margin uh, exceed. And the fixed cost of, of technology introduction. So intensive margin gains come gains come from those multinationals who would uh, buy even uh, without having the ITD technology, but with the ITD technology, the joint surplus is larger, so they can share this larger surplus. And the extensive margin comes from those multinational buyers who uh, wouldn't uh, buy um, if or. If, if uh, the firm uh, uh, doesn't introduce uh, this technology. Um, and as a result, uh, we can we can see that uh, from from the derivations that uh, the incentive of a supplier to introduce uh, this technology is higher if there is a larger share of uh, multinationals among the actual buyers and also among the potential ones. Uh, coming from this extensive margin story. Yes. In this model, um, why does the firm uh, grow a uh, infinitely large? Uh, to choose, you can choose only one. Uh, one uh, yes. Uh, yes. 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 So that's the question. You could choose. So turning to the empirics, um, so basically we, we just use this this theoretical framework to motivate our uh, our estimation uh, equations later on. Um, so to to turn to the empirics, uh, we use uh, this value added uh, tax uh, database uh, and the ICP survey database. Uh, these are two main elements uh, of of our uh, empirical strategy. Or not a strategy, but, but which enable uh, our empirical investigation. Uh, so the BAT database, uh, many of you uh, know about that, but it's a firm to firm uh, administrative database uh, containing all the transactions uh, um, to which uh, BAT uh, is uh, to be paid. Um, and um, in order to, to harmonize uh, over time, uh, Basically, not all the transactions are there, but uh, all larger transactions, so about uh, sort of small uh, value threshold, uh, are included. Uh, we can look at these. Uh, we know uh, the buyer and the supplier firm as well, and we can connect uh, balance sheet information and any other uh, type of firm level information to, to both uh, sides. Uh, and we also know uh, the value of the transaction. Uh, and this this will allow us to uh, to um, determine those firms uh, which have multinational buyers or buyers uh, which are connected to to global value chains uh, based on other measures. I will talk about in a minute. And the second element is the ICT survey, uh, the information communication technology database. Um, I already talked about talked about this a bit. Uh, the most important thing is that uh, it's a survey, uh, so we don't have information for, for all, all the firms, and we only use two waves, the 2015 and 2017, 
uh, in which they ask the questions we are interested in. Uh, but these are enough for us to uh, to look at changes over time. Uh, and, and we add balance sheet data and international trade data uh, to look at uh, global value chain uh, connections with, with alternative measures. Um, so I already uh, talked about uh, by uh, the external automated information sharing technologies. We use, uh, at the end, we use an index uh, of the two. Uh, so it's one half if the, if the firm uh, uses only one of the two technologies or uh, said yes to, to one of these questions only. And it will be one uh, if the firm uses both. Um, we control for additional uh, information and communication technology use, uh, like the internal automated information sharing uh, technologies. Uh, we uh, create a similar index uh, based on enterprise resource planning and customer relationship management technology use. Um, and uh, as a third element, I mean, we again we use it. We use it uh, to control for. Um, additional ICT use, uh, we create a simple ICT index, uh, which contains information on uh, whether the firm uses cloud computing, whether it has a web page, which is quite widespread, but still uh, no 100% uh, 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 So there are some firms who, which, which do not have, have it, uh, and, and the share of workers having a computer. Uh, but this is not in the focus, these are just controls. Uh, the other important part of the story uh, is how we uh, define uh, MME buyers or globally connected buyers. Uh, our baseline definition for a multinational uh, is um, simple but not perfect. So we, so we don't know about the exact multinational uh, status of the firm. We say that a foreign owned firm which is large enough is very likely to be multinational. And that's our definition for MEs, uh, for in owned firms with at least 500 employees. We, we have some robustness checks with other uh, cutoffs. Uh, then we um, look at buyers which are part of an international business group uh, that's coming from the uh, Community Innovation Survey, survey uh, looking at innovation mainly, but asking uh, this question as well. We don't know that for uh, all the firms, but we can use for, for some. Uh, then a third alternative measure for these global connections for the buyer uh, is whether they are intermediate input exporters. Um, we can classify uh, products to intermediate uh, inputs. And if, if a firm uh, has a high enough share of its total sales from exporting these kinds of goods, then, then we say that it's an important in intermediate input exporter. And we also uh, look at more indirect steps like uh, using suppliers uh, of, of enemies uh, as well. So these will be uh, alternative measures for, for having a, a global value chain or a globally connected buyer. That's, that's what we like that. Um, so I'd rather skip this. Uh, because you've already seen something uh, about the, the prevalence of technologies, um, not only in Hungary, but, but in other countries as well, and uh, turn to, uh, to our end paper strategy and, and results. So first, supplier choice, then technology choice. Uh, what, what do we do for supplier choice? Uh, we use a conditional uh, logit uh, estimation strategy in which uh, uh, the choice set uh, is uh, contains a specific buyer and uh, all potential uh, suppliers from a four digit industry in sources from. So we know that, let's say, Audi is buying, um, I don't know, uh, windscreens um, in Hungary. So we, let's say, some a tire, tire producing from a tire producing industry in Hungary because we know the industry but not the product. Uh, so we uh, in the choice set we will have uh, Audi and uh, we will have all the firms uh, who are uh, in the tire producing industry uh, in Hungary. 
Uh, and on the left hand side, we have an indicator for a specific firm, which, which is the actual supplier uh, of all the inner data. And on the right hand side, uh, uh, we put so our, our main uh, variable of interest uh, is uh, whether a potential supplier is using uh, this information communication technology. Uh, and uh, we have a, we have an interaction uh, term uh, with the multinational uh, nature or status uh, of the buyer. And in this, we ask whether multinational, so this, this is what, what will show us the complementarity. Uh, we ask uh, if, if multinationals uh, have value uh, the, this information communication technology use more than, uh, than uh, any buyer in general. Uh, and in the regression, we can control for uh, for many things, uh, like the general appeal of the firm uh, measured uh, by firm productivity, other type of information communication technology use, uh, the uh, foreign ownership uh, of the firm, also uh, spatial distance, um, and uh, and in additional. Um, specifications we have R and D activity and the number of buyers all interacted with with an uh, status of the value. Yes. I was wondering if uh, the fact whether the supplier is a part of an enemy uh, measures. Uh, so, in, in their case, it might that the ICT choice is not uh, of course made here. It might. It might. Uh, we we did some heterogeneity uh, results for this. I mean, differentiating between purely domestic firms. Um, so we we see the, the direct foreign owner. We can't see if it's indirectly foreign foreign owned from the data, but that's what we can do. Uh, and there we see that not not foreign ownership is driving this. So not not the supply also domestic suppliers with domestic owners uh, show these patterns. So that's. Uh, my response to that. Um, and so, so for the first potential issue, whether uh, the appeal uh, as an omitted variable plays a role in, in the patterns we see, uh, we, we control for a very rich set of, uh, of firm characteristics. Um, there is also another issue, the reverse causality issue. Sorry. Uh, whether firms, I mean, suppliers, uh, have uh, a technology because they they have these many buyers and that's a requirement. Uh, in this case, uh, we look at new buyers. So, given the te technology use, uh, whether there is a higher share of of MNEs among the new buyers, this will be second specification. Um, and the complementary parameter can be calculated uh, with with the betas uh, like this. Um, so this is the simple cross section. Yeah. So maybe a silly question about whether the buyer knows the status of the supplier. Or... You, you mean the whether the supplier uses uh, the technology? Yes. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So for all the potential suppliers, I'm not sure, of course, but but we might imagine that when when they start to negotiate, for example, whether or not to supply, I mean whether or not to to have a new supplier, uh, you know, there when when the certificates, for example, come into uh, uh, the picture, or whether so the, whether the requirements are there or not, then then we suppose that they can add this if if it matters. Is it possible that this this uh... Yes, it's correlated with something that you cannot observe, and this is probably elevated to all so, the time. Yeah, like you know, motivation or something that's something that is not related to uh, information technology at all, but sort of those people would be ready to. It can be, yes. So, what, what I can tell you that it, in general, we, we control for uh, for other uh, type of ICTU. So, I, I would say that. If if it shows motivation, then uh, then the this internal uh, technology use should should be also uh, connected to that. I mean, or or general uh, productivity of the firm. So we we this is a sort of the appeal or motivation or whatever uh, label you you put put to that. 
and that's why we, we control for these uh, and and um, yeah for that uh, what we what we have there is is really uh, the, the, that kind of uh, specific technology uh, between uh, the communication between uh, firms. Um, so this is the same uh, table for for the new suppliers, and here you can say, see the uh, the same uh, patterns as before uh, firms. So the complementary parameter between the M&E status of, of the new buyer and uh, the uh, the international the uh, ultimate information sharing technology use of, of the uh, supplier. Uh, is is uh, significantly uh, positive, controlling for all uh, what I've said before. New buyers. Uh, so in in this in this case, uh, in we we only look at um, those supply by relationships uh, in which uh, the the buyer hasn't uh, purchased anything from from the supplier in the first period. So so these are new suppliers, and all the potential new suppliers are the other firms in the same four digit industries industry, which uh, which uh, also uh, didn't um, sell anything uh, to the buyer in, in the uh, baseline period. Um, and we can, or I, I can show you uh, I, if, if you would like to, but uh, I, I need to conclude soon uh, because of the time. Uh, so the, the same things are in the same patterns are not uh, true for internal automated information sharing. Uh, and we can also show that uh, this um, global connection is, is a characteristic which is really driving uh, this pattern. Uh, on the buyer side, so if we look at uh, other uh, characteristics like size or technology use, uh, it's not uh, the main driver, but but uh, the enemy status or the GDC connected nature, and the results are robust to, to many things. So the the final or and second and final uh, thing is uh, the technology choice, um, in which uh, we use a simple logic model. Um, our sample is consists of those firms uh, which do not uh, use this specific technology in 2015, uh, and we ask whether they introduced that by 2017, uh, and we look at uh, the share of multinationals among their buyers uh, in the baseline period. And also, in addition to that, uh, we look at the share of multinationals among their potential buyers. So this is, again, based on input output matrices and looking at a uh, share of enemies in all the bio, bio industry or among all the bio industry firms. Again, uh, we can control uh, for many things. Uh, productivity, uh, foreign ownership, general ICT use, so the same, same things as before. Um, and what we see uh, is uh, that the share of uh, international buyers, I mean, M&E buyers or business group uh, connected buyers and so on, is in most specifications, uh, I mean, in, in the three main specifications, let's say it's, uh, it has a significantly uh, positive coefficient. So uh, firms are more likely to introduce uh, this external automated information sharing technology if they have a higher share of, of international buyers. Uh, and if we focus on uh, on multinationals, uh, we also find that in addition to that, uh, potential buyers also matter. Um, results are not uh, very robust uh, to to specification changes, but um, but there is some uh, some suggestive evidence for um, for this. Um, okay, um, so. The other technology uh, should look a bit. Uh, I, I unfortunately copy the same table, but um, <laughs> there should be. Uh, so it's it's not the very same, but something similar. Uh, um, but I can I could uh, show you uh, nice robustness robustness checks uh, here as well. Um, there is some evidence that indirect links also matter, but but not always. Uh, and uh, 
and again, as before, uh, the, the global connect, global connected nature uh, matters and not the size uh, or or the foreign ownership itself uh, of the buyer. Uh, and again, not true for, for this internal automated information sharing use. Uh, and the very last thing is that uh, we also did some back of the envelope calculation to, to find out uh, um, what, what is the magnitude uh, of this uh, effect, if, if we can call it like that. Um, finding that uh, basically there's a 10 uh, percentage point uh, increase in the probability of supplying the enemy buyer if the firm uses uh, automated in external automated information sharing technologies and there's some kind of heterogeneity uh, by uh, the productivity of the firm. Uh, and again, uh, the, the magnitude is non negligible uh, for. Um, the ultimate information sharing technology introduction as well, uh, conditional on uh, having or not uh, enemy buyers, uh, or having more precisely having more enemy buyers, uh, more potential enemy buyers, basically, uh, in, in the buying industry of the firms. Um, and we also estimate a strong complementary parameter. Um, so that was uh, it. Uh, we could show some evidence for um, for the role of a specific technology uh, in um, becoming in first becoming uh, connected to GVC, and also the role of uh, multinational globally connected buyers in the propagation of this specific technology. Um, and it um, yeah it it also uh, gives a hint that. Um, Promoting these technologies might might help uh, firms to to integrate uh, into into global value chains and especially analysis. And there might be some kind of a multiplicator effect uh, coming from from multinational buyers. So thank you very much. And uh, and uh, any questions or comments or anything. Uh, I'm a bit lost. Uh, how to how to qualify if a, if if a firm is directly supplying uh, audit and exporting to Indostan. Uh, what is nice. the difference, yeah. and uh, how do you treat this uh, as a different case? Because to, yeah. in, in my understanding, both can be both can have the same type of uh, yeah. uh, component energy and all the other. What you are, what you are trying to measure. Yes, very good question. So, <laughs> in this, we, we focus on the intent uh, because we have data on that. Uh, we don't know the, we don't know about whether the firm says to all the English or or to a small firm in Germany, uh, which is not part of, of the global value chain. So we, we wanted to to. Um, uh, exploit uh, the the precise information we have within the firm, uh, but we uh, we might uh, contra for that actually. So the the uh, exporting activity uh, of our firm. You should uh, somewhat respond yeah. by those firms who are strong exporters because they there might be very yeah uh, very easy case that they are they are doing both activities. Yes, yes, and. My last question that uh, five years later might not be enough to somehow say something about the stability of these relationships, but you might also look a bit of the switches who are uh, switching uh, multinationals uh, and suppliers. So, not only those who are uh, becoming suppliers, but those who who choosing between the, the, the firms mm -hmm. to, to supply them. So you mean right. so relationships uh, better amazing. to supply to 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 Audi or to Mercedes? Oh, I see, I see. So changes between yes. the multinationals and the stability yes. of because you are heavily concentrating on yeah. the other side of the yes, exactly. And uh, actually, by now we have a longer time horizon, so so we could we could check that as well. Yeah, right. Um, I have more comments. Uh, the third one is that it is a uh, 
that I think by definition is a global value change. If you uh, export tomato to a German retailer and sell, then the German retailer sells it somewhere in Germany. Because you know, it's true. Yeah. And if, even if you uh, export something to a very small uh, German company, it's, it's a global value chain. So you should explain why, and you have information on that because you have exportation. Of and course, yeah, that, that, that's why. Okay, so I do not know that. But uh, you should explain it why uh, export has that one time matter in the in, uh, global value chain. Uh, we, don't, we don't say that they it do not matter. We, we would like to. Uh, so, Basically, this this is about learning from your buyer. You, you might learn from from a retailer from Germany as well. It's fun. Example, but if you export something, then uh, global value chain. Okay, then then we differentiate between different types of global value chain, and we we are focusing on those uh, in which the user is is a manufacturing firm, and we are we are uh, focusing on these kinds of relationships in which in which that's something. Yeah, but. And the right third okay. thing which I uh, may return I had originally is that I think there is a discrepancy between your uh, model and your uh, return. Yes. In the sense that most of the firms uh, you would have only one uh, buyers. And perhaps you only need these uh, digital stuff if you have more than one uh, buyers. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps it's just a scale effect that the more uh, buyer uh, you have, the more likely you need. Uh, we, we have a, a specification in which we control for the number of buyers and that's, also that's, that's good. but that's still i think uh in the, the model that you were asking terms mm -hmm. uh to uh, uh pick only one uh, mm -hmm. um, buyers it's not uh so great mm -hmm. if in your empirical specification uh, you will use uh multiple buyers by default and you identify mm -hmm. that like, share of your buyer system uh in the model we have multiple buyers they pick one supplier okay in in reality of course a buyer picks many suppliers but in each choice uh so in each choice they will pick only one in this sense okay perhaps it's fine in the paper yeah. but based on your presentation okay thank you very much for the presentation if there is any more questions then you can ask that uh, Okay. <laughs> 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 